You got it. Great. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to see so many Hello. live human beings, almost live human beings who are getting there. Um, <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about why we're here and uh, what my my role is. We um, we actually had a, a you know we had the event in the fall, the founders event when we christened the new Stanley building and. Um, we had a lot of alumni around and one of our alums from SCMA, who was a theater major, but now is in PR, um, came to me and said, you know, I, I wanna tell you about what I'm doing in this esports world. And I wanted you to, to have some idea of what's out there and to see if Oswego would be a place that would be interested in some of this. Um, I have heard the term esports over the past few years sort of mentioned by a variety of people, but frankly, I don't, don't, didn't know a whole lot about it, but I understand now it is a big deal <laughs> that is on many, many campuses um, and is started out as a sort of a student club type of thing um, and has grown. And now more and more campuses are starting academic programs around esports. Um, so that I brought that alumni into a meeting with Scott Furlong and myself, and we talked through some of the ideas and he got pretty uh, enthusiastic about it. And he asked me to pull together a group to start just sort of brainstorming about whether or not this is feasible and what it might look like on our campus. So I, when I put out the call originally to the other deans to reach out to folks that they thought might be interested, um, I, I got some good response. And one of the great surprises was Jared. And I don't know if you all know Jared Hagedorn who teaches Hello. as an adjunct part-time person in uh, the Cinnamon Screen Studies area. But I was going to sort of punt to him right now to give an overview of what's already happening on our campus that you may or may not be aware of. Sure. All right. Sure. So esports has been on the SUNY Oswego campus for about 10 years now. And they started off as a League of Legends club and have evolved since then. And I got involved with them maybe two years um, before... We, we were all sent home due to the pandemic. Uh, you know, so that was a bummer, but you know, we all experienced that. Uh, but uh, so I got into the Discord chat with them last night and asked to help me put together a document to sort of go over some general information. And I'm going to share that with you all right now, um, uh, briefly. So um, the Esports uh, Association uh, at SUNY Oswego plays in several different games, uh, including League of Legends, Super Smash Brothers, Overwatch, Rocket League, uh, Pokemon, Draft League, Hearthstone, uh, Rainbow Six, Guilty Ge Gear, Strive, and Halo Infinite. Um, and all of these games are played through different governing bodies, uh, which include uh, the Oswego Esports Association, of course, you know, on campus, and they have their own weekly games and weekly tournaments, um, but also larger uh, organizations that are mostly North American organizations, if, if I understand correctly, that's as, as far as um, uh, they've started to push into right now. But um, so groups such as the New England Collegiate Conference um, and CSL Esports, uh, they play um, Rocket, so SUNY Oswego plays Rocket League and Rainbow Six with the NECC. Uh, but also there is a SUNY Esports, so it's a SUNY-wide, so like we participate in with um, the film festival, they have a SUNY-wide Esports uh, League or association, which uh, is really exciting, it's really cool. Um, but they play Rocket League and Hearthstone and Halo Infinite and the uh, SUNY Esports right now. Uh, so that's really great. So they are, so the Oswego teams are really trying to push out there into the world. Uh, and I think they've been doing a great job. Uh, so did you mean to uh, share your screen or had you done? Um, you know what? Let's do that. OK. Thank you. Let me find that document. There we go. Can we see um, yep. these stats here? OK, excellent. Um, well, so here's some information. Uh, there are roughly uh, 300 registered members, um, 170 active members. Um, these are the games that they're all playing. Uh, League of Legends, Rocket League, I already went through some of these. Um, now, what I thought was really great, especially considering um, the Shenandoah program that uh, you had linked earlier uh, in, the, in the call for this meeting, uh, there are 
opportunities for um, conferences and um, publications. So uh, SUNY Esports has their own conference. Um, the New England Collegiate Conference exists. Um, CSL has a conference. And let's see, we, we have the Riot Scholastic Association of America as well. Um, and then down here, I wasn't aware of this. The students turned me on to this last night, but um, the DIGRA conference uh, is, it looks like it's purely academic and um, you know, students are publishing in there, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and I know that I've published in, in areas that are not specific to gaming, but they welcome uh, gaming articles. Uh, so to find these areas that are specific to gaming is incredibly exciting. And I know that our students at Oswego are uh, very interested in it. And if given you know, the opportunity and the leadership, they would be, they would jump right in. Uh, so that's that's sort of a brief rundown. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I don't want to 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 you know I won't bore you with the in individual game information, but um, that's that's a brief breakdown. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll I'll also release you from my screen. Any questions for Jared on that? So this whole world was very new to me, and um, the thing that I found interesting was you know I I think we. I initially thought, well, it's basically they're going to be play the, playing the game and then we need people to develop the games, but it is much more than that. So I'm going to share my screen now and hopefully I will be able to show you what I need to show you. Uh, there we go. Oh, please. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so. Thank you, here's where we are. So the alum that we talked about was this Dresden Engel, her name is, um, and she was alum from the 90s, I believe. Um, but so she presented me with this list of courses that she is able to, has taught, has taught at a college and, is, and you know would be willing to teach them here and she has taught these online. But just to kind of give you a, an idea, and I'm gonna put you all in, give you access to a Google folder that I created that has a lot of information in there. But basically you can see that that it's there's a lot more to it and some areas that maybe we hadn't thought about uh, before that might be a really good fit for SUNY Oswego. Um, so shout casting, I thought this is the third course down here. That was the one that cracked me up. So instead of broadcasting where you do play by play, it's called shout casting, apparently. <laughs> Maybe I get Jared pop in anytime I'm embarrassing myself. But um, basically you learn to do play by play for the games as you're watching the games. And it's, there's a whole skill set to that. Um, some broadcasting courses that are part of, of the esports, cross-cultural communication in esports, marketing and sales and sponsorship, management, the business of esports, marketing, uh, selling it, building community, cross-cultural you know, communication and the history of gaming. These are just some of the courses that this person has taught and um, you know, it can sort of get us thinking or talking about what we might be able to do at Oswego. Um, I'm gonna go to another document. So this is the file I created for you um, and go back here for a moment. So basically, um, I just pulled this general description that says the types of jobs all, you can read, um, but you can see there's all sorts of things um, around the whole esports world. And I, I'm not going to click on the links now, but I provided you with a bunch of links that give you sort of the background of uh, generally the background of this, but also specific universities that are launching it and what their thinking was and uh, how they move along through that program. And then um, I just pulled some existing programs that one could look at um, to get some idea of what some other schools are doing. Um, I sent out this link to Shenandoah because I was just sort of blown away with the number of programs they had there. Everything from a graduate certificate to a minor to a you know, bachelor's of arts degree, I believe it was, or maybe a bachelor of science um, and then a Bachelor of Business Administration and graduate degrees even in that. So there, there's a wide variety um, of, of know, options for us to even consider, but you know, you don't wanna launch in, you don't want this to be a top down, you will do this. Um, we have to figure out if there's enough interest amongst faculty 
to put something like this together. Um, be, some of the coursework, I think some of the classes that you saw in that earlier sheet, I think you probably could take existing classes and adapt them slightly or just add elements to them that would cover uh, the esports aspect of things. But from reading through the various uh, campus uh, reports on what they're doing with their curriculum, it looks like you need to have at least a couple of actual esports, directly esports classes, um, sort of as a core for, for whatever curriculum you choose. Um, let me go back here for a moment. And so I put a lot of stuff in here. Um, the, we currently have a sports minor that you may or may not be aware of. And so there's certainly some coursework in here if they're not already packed with students that we could you know, combine with this program, that some of which are appropriate and some of which aren't appropriate. Um, but to make anything like this happen, we need champions within the different schools. Um, there's even an educational aspect of these. I mean, if you take the concept of esports and gaming and bring it to even like K-12, there's, um, there's some interesting things going on with teaching kids by using the gaming concepts, right? And that competition to help get some basic uh, concepts across. So um, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing too. But so I will definitely give you all um, access to these reports as we go through. But um, it, it is something that I thought was very interesting. I did just today, um, West Virginia University um, was kind enough, I wrote to them and asked them, this is a new minor that they've put together. So typically what we've done here is, is uh, start with, often we've started with a minor and see how popular it is. And when the numbers get big, we say, okay, I think this can be a major. Um, but we don't have to start that way if we go this direction at all. But this is what they came up with. And I just thought, you know, for a point of conversation, it might be a good place to, to even start thinking about it. Um, when I talked to Scott about it, he really thought that this, this might be as a major would work well if you had a basic core and then sort of tracks. Um, you know, a lot of, we get a lot of students who come to, to Oswego and they say they want to they want to be in video games, right? And they think that it's going to be easy peasy to create a video game. And then they take, realize they have to take math and computer science at a pretty high level and they end up kind of tanking out. So, um, you know, there, there might be a, a different track for some of those folks. So there might be a business sales marketing management track and there might be a communication social media track, um, you know, after you, and there might be a, a creation of the actual games track. Um, so that's something we could discuss also. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing for now and literally say, are you interested in just sort of talking it through? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, is, do you think, it, I think it would be popular. Um, I, I don't think there are a lot of comp competitors within SUNY. There's one up in Canton. Um, so th there would be a little competition there, but there, there aren't a lot within SUNY at this point that I know about. Um, so what are your thoughts? I don't see any reason for why this shouldn't be tried, at least at the, you know, starting with the minor. I was looking at the Shenandoah program. I mean, that's obviously more elaborate and uh, you know, they have a pretty good structure here. But um, aside from the eSports, courses, the other stuff that they require are courses that we are already offering here on campus. Right. Um, so the, the only the only aspect there would be capacity in various departments. Right. Um, but I guess in the context of the enrollment decline that we have experienced over the past couple of years, I don't you know, that might not necessarily be an issue. And some of the esports courses that um, are offered by Shenandoah, I think overlap to some extent with what Dresden had in her document. Right. Uh, these are my two cents here. I have, I have a few things to say about this. Sure. Um, as most of you know, I have a lot of experience in uh, gaming. Um, 
my last job in Australia was as a department chair of a video games department running six undergraduate degrees in video gaming. Uh, the first comment I have is, I know this isn't your area, Julie, but you have to be very careful about the different tracks you're talking about. Uh, for example, just throwing in that someone could become a game designer after doing an esports degree, they're not gonna do that. Right. You know, um, the marketing, uh, you know, the management of esports is a very specific thing. The communication esports is a specific thing. Um, you've got to be careful about conflagrating all these. And like that thing about education and gamification, that's a completely different subject as well. Okay. So, you know, we have to be quite specific about what we're talking about. Okay. Secondly, a word of warning um, about something I've experienced a lot in the past. How many people here have played a AAA game in the last week? So three, four of us. How many people play more than four or five uh, hours of video games a week? <laughs> Would you start an English literature degree with a bunch of people who don't read novels? Would you start a film course with a bunch of people who don't watch movies? <laughs> yeah? Um, you know, it, it doesn't work. You have to have gamers. You know, people who actually do what you're teaching. Um, and so, you know, that's a word of warning that we've experienced before, where administrators come up with an idea and they grab other courses that people are teaching. And people who aren't gamers are teaching kids who game 20 hours a week. And it won't work, <laughs> you know. Right. So, you know, you have to be aware of this. Just two things I want to throw out there before you get too far. Jamie, and both of those are good points. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a fish out of water here. So <laughs> that was, you know, it's, it's very helpful. So the point of this meeting was to see if, if we have enough faculty on the campus who do this, who are interested in running with the ball. I guess that's the, the point of this meeting and, and to sort of identify those folks and, and get their opinions on, on whether or not they're, they're willing to move this forward and, and how they might be willing to move it forward. So I can see how this fits in with the School of Education and specifically the Health Promotion and Wellness Department, as well as maybe even the Tech Department um, with teaching this to the K through 12. But with the Health Promotion and Wellness, as we're talking about education and health education and gaming. Um, and yes, you have a point, Damien, in regards to the experts in the field versus those who kind of like toy with it. Um, or not at all. And so maybe there may be opportunities to co-teach. So where, for example, I'm not an avid gamer, although I have kids that I try to get off of gaming, but, uh, you know, you, but I'm not an avid gamer, but I do know some of the areas that need to be addressed. And I, but I may also co-teach with someone who is that avid gamer so that we can develop a very rich course um, for the students. So like I can think of, a course that I, I thought about developing is technology and gaming addiction. And so, cause that is one area that has to be addressed as well, even more so now as gambling is um, legalized online and that's connected to the gaming world. Again, at just the same point, that is a really valid source of research education, something that should be studied, but it's not esports. <laughs> you know, we have to, we I mean, have to I wonder categorize. I in relation to Damien's question, how many people honestly don't even really know what esports are? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, or, you know, I mean, have you ever sat and watched a game? Like, you know, there's, it's a, it's a specific, it's a very specific thing and it's, I don't know, yeah. We've, been, we've actually been doing some research on the psychological motivations of both Twitch streamers and the uh, viewers. So we published a couple of articles on that recently about who does this and why they do it. Uh, and comparing that to game attacks, it's been pretty interesting. Do you I mean, I guess, again, Julie, I'm, I'm a real outsider too. I will admit that. I'm, I'm learning from my daughter and my potential future son-in-law, okay? So, <laughs> but it gives us something to talk about when we're together, which is great. Um, and I have to agree with Damien absolutely that, you know, separating out 
game design as its own discipline as it is, um, which you know is the intersection of a game theory as well as application development is different from this, which is much more aligned as you see in Dresden's curriculum and the other curriculums, I think in event management, right? Because it's event management within a specific space like Damien says, you know, when you reference Twitch, I'm like, oh, right, exactly. That's it's, its whole universe over there. Um, so I think it can be done, but I think it has to be very focused in it. And to be honest, I think you need an advisory panel of people who do live it, which is right. not necessarily all of us around this call, right? Who are, who are in that core demographic. So in other words, a student advisory panel. Well, and that's the core of the problem too, is that you have students that know way more about esports than you do, and you're trying to teach a class. And that's pretty deadly, as we all know. I've seen this so many times with these sorts of programs. And it's like I said, you would never dream of setting up an English literature degree with people who don't read books. Yet it seems like people are prepared to set up a gaming degree with people who don't game. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me at all. And it never has, and it's doomed to fail, you know. Same as setting up a film program with, and the half of the, would you employ a professor who doesn't watch films? You know, <laughs> you, you wouldn't. So, you know, we have to think about that very carefully. Does everyone kind of know what, I mean, did you want an overview of what eSports actually is if you don't know anything about it? Yes, Ranjit. Jared, could you kind of explain what it, what it is? Sure. Um, so actually, so you'll notice Shane joined us as well. Um, Shane, did, there you go. So Shane's <laughs> the president of eSports. And uh, so Shane worked with me to put that document together yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that I had all of my information together. Um, so I'll go first, and then Shane, if you just want to jump in and and you know correct me if I'm wrong or yeah, you know if I'm leaving anything out. Okay. So esports is um, mainly comprised of um, a number of competitive games that are either team based or um, individual competitions, like one versus one, and they're played either through uh, PC or consoles. Um, often people are at the amateur level, they're logging in from home. Um, but as soon as, uh, you know, the schools form their teams and we move up in, in levels, um, you know, people participate in what are called arenas. And uh, so it's kind of, um, it's kind of like a computer lab, but it is very specific to esports and uh, that um, the computers are arranged in a certain way for, for teams to, to sit together. Um, and often, at least where I've been, often um, you'll sit across from another team and uh, it'll be like, usually like five versus five or six versus six. And uh, at the university I was at previously, we converted an old broadcasting um, uh, studio into the esports arena. So we also had that broad uh, broadcasting separate room with a you know, the glass window in between. So we were able to um, monitor what was going on, and there was a team of people that would, you know, swap between screens and be able to to, to shoutcast. Uh, that was a new term for me, also, um, but it's very accurate. Um, so, so that's sort of the setup. Like that's what it looks like. Uh, it is generally people at their computers um, in front of screens, like we're doing right now, um, but also consoles, you know, like PlayStation or Xbox, um, and Shane. When people play uh, Pokemon. What are they using? Um, for Pokemon, they use a website called Pokemon Showdown, which is basically okay. a free to play, um, a free to play service that gives access to every Pokemon and sort of um, like item, etc. It's kind of okay. just like um, a universal tool to compete in. Okay, so then if it's a website, they're on their phones or any device that's mobile, right? Yeah, but typically okay. it's played through the, like a, a PC, just so it's more like accessible. Right. Okay. So in the games that are being played, I know I mentioned a few of them, but uh, some of the, the large names that yeah. probably most of you have heard of, um, maybe, is uh, Call of Duty or Fortnite, um, Rocket League to some extent. Um, Super what Smash are some Brothers. Of, uh, Su yeah, Super Smash Brothers. How could I yeah. forget? That's probably the mm -hmm. most popular. Um, 
And if you're ever cruising around campus uh, after hours and you look in some of the classrooms where um, SUNY esports are holding tournaments, you'll see them uh, in there playing these games, uh, <laughs> which is pretty fantastic. Uh, so, so what do you think, Shane? What else? How else would we describe esports? Um, I think you you kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, I think I also want to touch on how the broadcasting aspect of it. There is a big sort of like, there is a big sort of like micro industry within esports that could like, revolves around broadcasting because while we do have um in our club we do have you know our coordinators for each game we are trying to branch out into like a more of a broadcasting like subsection okay because when it comes to esports broadcasting online and for others to see with commentators proper equipment it's very it's very like detrimental to how um esports grows and it's overall how it's run other so than that, yeah, you. Yes. So right. when when you talk uh, about broad broadcasting, we're talking about Twitch, right? Yeah, Twitch. Yeah. Any sort of like you know, broadcasting like any sort of like you know, broadcasting website or service, really. Okay. I do, I I mean, you called it a micro industry. It's worth over a billion dollars. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I mean, yeah. And, and it's tripling in revenue every year. Every year. So the prediction is for three billion dollars by the end of twenty twenty two. So, yes, yeah, sorry, you know. I, was, I was thinking about the club, not like you know. <laughs> <for real>. <laughs> <laughs> we were still we were still just getting started, you know. Kind of work with what we have. But uh, so, yeah, but go ahead, Damien. The Twitch thing as well is interesting because I mean we talk about teams, but there's a lot of kind of almost individual competition against manufacturers for speed records and things like that. Which are watched by million, which are also broadcast, watched by millions of people. Right, right. Uh, something else worth noting with esports is that uh, the organized teams uh, are getting together for practices. Um, uh, depending on on what game they're playing, uh, it's often. Um, well, I don't know, Shane. I was going to say it's it's probably this, a similar schedule to uh, most of the other sports on campus. Do you think that's accurate to say? Um, so for our teams specifically, um, our teams typically meet once a week and they play together and, you know, they coordinate, they make plans, how, how to like, you know, approach different other, like other strategies, other teams. They mm -hmm. typically practice for about two hours a week. Okay. And, you know, and they meet like purely online through their own like computer, computers. Right. And that's one of the holdups that we were, that we've been talking about is that, um, Esports needs a centralized location, there, that arena, again, that we've been discussing, uh, where students can get together on a daily basis to uh, practice, you know, so run plays to discuss strategies, uh, build their teams and build, um, you know, their overall uh, performance. You know, in terms of Damien's comments and in general, I wonder we, you know, last year we had this amazing group come called Sultan of Strings. It was just one of the Artswego events where this group came and, and performed and they produced everything themselves. They broadcasted from Canada and, and the main lead guy there ran the whole show from a mixing board and, and foot pedals, literally changing cameras with foot pedals and doing. And I, I wonder if you could kind of expand this into a new minor that was more about media broadcasting like personal broadcasting you could have an esports game portion you could have a portion about you know um how to twitch stream how to do all these types of things how to use obs how to you know could you could you kind of create something to start that was a little bit broader and kind of encompass this new problem that we have where zoom is the new meet place you know the computer is the new meeting place in the world and like, could you have a minor that like really emphasized that production and the delivery of content via the internet? Um, I mean, you know, it sounds like a comms minor to me. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? And, and at the at the very least, um, if you know, at the very least, if not a minor, there is certainly um, 
a need for, you know, if esports takes off on Oswego as an academic program, there's certainly a need to have uh, at least one class that is specific to how do we broadcast esports, how, you know, how do we manage the material, how do we create content and manage that content uh, and, th and then produce it. And I think that's already in line with a lot of um, the broadcasting goals that SUNY Oswego currently has. And uh, from there, it might grow into something more into a minor. Um, that's not really my field, but um, at the very least, it, it would make sense in a in an esports program as we go. I mean, in the music department, we don't really have to teach any of this at all. How, how to broadcast, how to how to mix audio, how to produce a show with sound. I mean, you know, why not? Right. John Lindstedt, I I'm not familiar with what department you work for. I'm sorry. Hi, uh, computer science, but specifically cognitive scientists. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Great. I could I could roll a little bit for, forward from that. I, my my involvement. Uh, I don't think any courses are going to make sense. But my my dissertation was done on um, competitive gaming Tetris, uh, and. I want to revive that line of research, right? Because I, my advisors are right over there in at RPI over in Troy, so it's it's like an easy access and that kind of stuff. I will I'll be operating in the fringes, I think. But if this picks up, then I am in a prime place to you know get students research experience and involve the the clubs and, and stuff in this kind of this kind of uh, broader reaching stuff. <laughs> Great. Just one thing that I wanted to add, and this echoes Damien's point, uh, definitely focus is needed. Um, because what I was mentioning in the very beginning, I was referring specifically to the esports management track that, um, um, that Shenandoah has on their website. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but obviously, we will need faculty who would teach esports stuff. Right. Pretty much, I'm not sure if um, if I could just share my screen really, really quick here. Um, screen two. Um, zoom in. Basically, this is the esports stuff that they have there. Obviously, we would, you know, if we think about such major minor, we would need to be able to offer these. Things. All right. The other core, you know, I mean, I'm not an expert in how and who would be teaching this, but then the other stuff that they uh, list as part of their major is stuff that we already offer, like statistics and data analysis, principles right. of micro macroeconomics, accounting, um, and then other things that, again, I'm pretty sure uh, we offer these yeah. uh, on, on campus. So, um, that's that's what I meant initially when I was thinking about the possibility of us being offerings. Clearly, this is something that, that that needs to be addressed. Right, and I don't know if it, you know, I, I don't know if we have folks out there who aren't already <laughs> completely swamped within their own departments who wouldn't possibly have time or interest in in developing this, or if this is something that we feel strongly enough that we you know we do a, a hire. Uh, to, to move us in that direction. I see Scott's on the line and he, it was his brilliant idea in the first place, sort of. So I don't know if he has anything he wants to add to the conversation. Well, it's not my brilliant idea to begin <laughs> with. I, um, we share brilliant ideas. No, I don't have anything to add, Julian. I didn't, I missed the context of the question anyway, so. <laughs> okay, yeah. no, we were just talking about how it's, uh, we wouldn't think, I don't know if you heard the part about, uh, it wouldn't make sense to teach or have a program on esports without faculty who are esports players and and experts. Um, well, experts, whether they're players or not, I guess. <laughs> yeah, players for sure. You know. Um, so, I do you all know of others, other faculty out there that aren't on this meeting that, you know, would be people we should reach out to, to discuss this, or does anybody know of anybody that's not here? Well, I know that uh, Ulysses Mejias had taught a uh, video game theory and development course, uh, or video game theory and end analysis course, not right. development. Um, I don't know if he still teaches it, though. 
he hasn't been able to because he's been doing the IGE program. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Right. Taking him away from that. But I mean, okay. there are courses here, there, and everywhere, you know, little one off courses that are vaguely related. But as, you know, taking Damien's point, they're not esports courses. They're I'm teaching, I'm teaching video game design probably in the fall. Right. I get teach it, you know, so. So there are courses here, there, and everywhere. Um, but, the, but it doesn't get to the core, those core courses. Like if, if we wanted to put together a program, you know, we would need to develop a core of courses that are really specifically for esports. And and you know, I just don't know if we have folks out there um, interested in doing that. Yeah, Julie, uh, there are two professors in the store department. Uh, Leonardo Hernandez uh, is teaching currently a course called uh, History in Video Games, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very popular course, as you can imagine. Uh, Chris Mack is uh, always teaching something about sports history which is uh, actually most of the time uh, soccer and other uh, physical sports, but I'm sure some of those uh, can be applicable to idea of sports as uh, Jared mentioned uh, when he showed that document too, I think it was there. Plus we have a couple of digital humanities trained faculty in uh, various departments across CLAS uh, from psychology to history. Um, and some are also teaching various softwares, et cetera, which may be applicable uh, depending on the track again and the focus. Right. So but there are there are more people for sure. So I think we have lots of electives and cognates, <laughs> but you know what we're lacking is that that core. Um, and and I don't know. Again, is there anybody on this call who would even feel comfortable teaching something like that at this point? That's where the crickets happen, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just have a question and maybe this is my own ignorance in this field, but how closely does the, the video gaming or gaming and esports overlap? So when you know when I'm hearing Jared mention Ulysses class on theory um, and video gaming, or with Murat mentioning a couple, um, and he uses because they use the term video game and not esports. Then there creates a different some type of differentiation when in fact when i'm reading about it or when i try to learn about this from what i see they're interrelated so can someone tell me i know with esports what you mentioned like what esports or esport athletes i'll say what they do right but how how can is it possible that we can say that that video game component even you know we can apply that to esports or esport theory um, probably, probably the best way to describe it is imagine if you have a degree in hotels and tourism, which is about how to run hotels and how to run tourism. That's very different to the, uh, a degree in architecture about how to learn how to build hotels. Yeah. So the building of the games is something completely different to the management of the people who run the games. Okay, but at some point, the students are, that's gonna have to be integrated in a program, at least even just foundational information of how like the nuances of building to get to the, the actual sport, right? Which includes that theoretical perspective. No? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I, I would it's just- a different, It's well, a different- I would, Wouldn't we teach some of it, right? Like a little bit, a little bit of background. I mean, you know? It could be, it would be more of an elective probably, you know, than core. It's, it's like, you know, the, the hotel and tourism one, it, it's a management course. It's a, it's a management course. And you could learn the, some of the theory, but it, it's a completely different discipline. You know, you wouldn't do much. You might do it as an elective or something. Yeah. You know, one's a broadcasting, what we're talking about, one's a broadcasting degree, one's One's a computer science degree, one's, a, one's an art degree, one's a management degree, and one's an education degree in gamification and education. They're all different topics. Okay. Hey folks, uh, Scott Harrison from Campus Recreation. Um, it's, a, it's an awesome conversation. And uh, there was one point, uh, almost 20 years ago now that Rich Hughes, who's the director of Campus Life, had mentioned that, Scott, you better be prepared in recreation that you be primarily online. 
and I told them that I would probably retire at that point. But so I might have that that crossroads at some point here uh, in my work day still to make that decision. But I invited Shane along, uh, the president of the club, um, and I'm glad Jared here is kind of speaking on behalf of that too. But um, I, I have some background in this experience in terms of telling my father that I was a sport management major. And he, he kind of, you know, <laughs> swallowed deeply and, and was nervous coming from an engineering background. And uh, as Damien had mentioned, and I told him some of the economics of things, and then he kind of settled down a little bit and uh, supported that decision. Um, but I, I went to Cortland State as a football player and then found a degree. Uh, I guess my some of the, the points of that, I think no matter how this is would be built as a more electives or a minor, um, from my perspective, working with folks like Shane and Jared is that the infrastructure of building that lab is critical into creating a hub of, of um, socializing uh, opportunities for these students to connect, to socialize, to see like-minded people, um, and to, to find synergy between the different disciplines. So I, I really do believe that that lab is critical, uh, this, even maybe despite the development of a uh, minor um, for our students and our retention of our students and recruitment. We do have students contacting us asking us about esports facilities, um, uh, scholarships, um, and uh, things just like you know the varsity, you know athletics and non clubs have been you know even uh, in the last ten to fifteen years. Club sports as a whole, in terms of recruitment and retention, has been you know critical. Uh, esports is, is forever becoming that as well. So um, I think it's wonderful for folks like Shane and Jared and others who have a passion about this and bringing together faculty, uh, staff and students um, through a sport that can be lifelong versus you know, some of the most more uh, vigorous or intense sports. So um, for my contribution, I really just, I guess, advocate that um, anybody here who has influence on that happening sooner than later, um, you know, that ho hopefully it will, if it isn't already in the works. I know that there have been some conversations about finding a space for this that has, you know, I, I know that people are looking into possibilities for that, um, which is great. Um, so yeah, I, we'd love to have, I mean, I think that Shane's input and your input, um, Scott, are really important you know, as, if we move forward. And I like John's suggestion in the chat that maybe we develop a panel of folks that's, that um, talk about creating a, maybe a single course to get started off with um, that is really directly about esports. Um, and I guess I would ask if there's anybody on this call who'd be willing to be on said panel. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm taking names. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I got Miha, I got Naja. Did I get John? John and Jared. And did I get Damien? All right. And oh, Marat. All right. So at least we, I, I would like to get somebody from um, broadcasting, you know, in the room with us uh, since we, and I am from Biz School of Business as well because I do think there's a place for some business courses as well as obviously some, some broadcasting courses to, uh, ha to have a role in this as we move forward. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll try to gather folks. And uh, in the meantime, I will make the, the Google folder, you know, available to people just to, to nose around and look at what I put together and see some of the other programs. And if you need more information and background that might help you as well. But, uh, I'll raise, okay, thanks, John. Paul, oh, and Paul has good ideas. I That's fine. You know, I had another idea too. Like we have such, so many talented and amazing professional staff uh, at our campus. And this just seems like teaching this first class, find someone in the industry who was willing to teach a class that, you know, could get us started on something. Mm -hmm. um, it, there, you know, I, I mean, we need, we, I, I mean, I agree with Damien about you need gamers, but if you could find some guy who, or, or a person who has been in the industry running e-games for the past 10 years, that would be amazing, right? So, you know, that, that would, you could find professionals and our college has a lot of working professionals who are teaching 
And maybe that would be a, a way to get something started. You know, my first thought was before this meeting was, man, we need a couple of new faculty members for this who are experts. And then the rest of us can fill in the small gaps right. or the big gaps. But, you know, um, and I think that's where we're at. And, and it might, that might be the route is try and find, you know, do a search for someone to teach a class. I don't, I don't know how well, we've it got, works. We've got Dresden, this this alum. So it's possible that we could ask her to come in and, and teach a class or come meet with us and work with us on developing this, but we could maybe hire Dresden to teach a class, you know, to get us started for sure. Scott, did you have a question? Or are you just waiting? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know talking about new lines is probably the, the it's not so other. much a question, Julie, just I guess a comment. And I, I I'm sorry I was late for this. I had other another meeting I was in and um, my my thinking when I brought this up at Dean's Council and Julie you might have said this so forgive me if I'm if I'm restating it was that this is an opportunity in a couple of different ways um, for the institution and, and on, from the student side we know students are in this space right <laughs> um, and they are interested in this space not just uh, as a way of passing time, but potentially uh, in terms of what they may want to study, although they don't quite know how to study it, right? Or they don't quite know how to get into it. But I do think there are, what I liked about this and what, what we were chatting about in Dean's Council was there are multiple, there are multiple roads here um, and they don't all have to be, I, I think if we would have had this discussion 10 years ago, let's say we would be talking about it, well, obviously these are programmers, right? These, this is a computer science degree. This is, you know, but now it's, I think it's different. And that's, that's good because we, we know uh, from our experience in other areas that sometimes students come in with an idea that I'm going to be a gamer and then they understand, I have to figure out, oh, I have to do all this computer science-y stuff. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to do that, but there may be another avenue to still meet their interest in the larger field. So I think from a student perspective, um, we, we have potentially something to offer if we can pull this off. I think from an institutional perspective, and, and as I look at the, you know, the Brady Bunch group in front of me here, um, expanded because there's more than nine. Uh, I mean, we are representative of a lot of disciplines here and it really talks and speaks to the interdisciplinarity potential uh, and the collaborative potential across many different spaces, which again, I think that's a positive thing, uh, both for the institution, but again, for, I think for our students to get some different perspectives around this stuff as well. So again, I, this is more of a speech than a question, Julie. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and I understand the difficulties and the need that we probably have to find some, um, I'll use the term experts or, or people who can really dig into this um, and have and, and, and are sort of allocated to dig into this um, more so than the people that are on the screen here that uh, you know have full time jobs already. So great. Well, I appreciate the conversation, and I, I've learned a lot. So I appreciate that too. I, I, I wear my ignorance as a badge um, in this area. So anything you can do to to educate me, I'm happy to to hear about and. Uh, I will put this panel together and try to uh, regroup and then, and then I will share the folder as I said before. If you hear of other people or you see other folks that you know that might be interested, just send their names my way. Um, and I think that probably some of the other deans are gonna be having these conversations within your schools uh, as we try to move forward a little bit with this. Great. Well, thank you all for coming. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Julie.